All right, for this trick, I'm gonna need three selections. So I'm gonna have my three best friends go ahead and choose a card each. All right, they've chosen these three. Uh, we got the three of hearts, the nine of hearts, and the seven of hearts. And I'm gonna lose them somewhere within the deck. One, two, three. Just to make sure those are definitely placed individually at different parts of the deck. And for this trick, we're gonna need a rubber band. So I'm gonna use this rubber band and I'm going to wrap it around the deck, twist it up, and I'm gonna ask you to say stop whenever you like. Stop right there. I'm gonna place this rubber band right exactly where you said stop, and I'm gonna cut the deck right there, okay? Now if this all works well, I should be able to find your three cards on the count of three, one, two, three. Just like that, three cards jump out of the deck. Your three selections. But how? Now, if that's something you want to learn, stick around because we're getting into it right now. Yo, what is up? Today, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to be learning something really cool, something I like doing uh, quite often. So I'm going to show you a way to, first of all, control multiple selections to the bottom of the deck really smoothly and practically invisibly. This is one of my favorite controls to do. I've done it in a lot of videos before. You guys have been asking. How did how did you do How did you do it? Well, today I'm gonna to show you for the first time, but not only that, we're gonna get into what to do once the cards are on the bottom. Multiple selection tricks are really cool. I don't do very many of them because it gets confusing, but if you're ever in a situation where you have three spectators and you wanna perform one quick trick to all three spectators, this is a great one to do. And all you need is a deck of cards and a rubber band and some willing victims, spectators, not victims. Whatever. So before I get into this, uh, some crediting. Uh, multiple selection is based off an idea from Ken Krenzel. Uh, Ken Krenzel's Card Classics. It is the middle card control, I believe, and is also taught in the real work by Jason England and R. Paul Wilson. So check out those references. Uh, check out Card Classics by Ken Krenzel and the real work. Uh, you'll find some great stuff in there. I also have a book by Ken Krenzel. This is another book I like. This is uh, Relaxed Impossibilities by Ken Krenzel. Ken is an amazing sleight of hand guy. He's got some really cool ideas. A lot of stuff you would never do, honestly, but just fun to practice. Practice. Some interesting ideas. This move, however, is something that I do use, and I do use it to control one card to either the bottom or the top or multiple selections, like in this case. So I'm gonna briefly run over the multiple selections and how to get that to the bottom, but to really practice it and to really get to it will take you lots of practice to get it invisibly with no sound and minimal movement. Um, so I do suggest you pick up those things. Check out Card Classics by Ken. Check out Real Work. Uh, it'll help you out, and plus you'll learn a whole bunch more from them. Uh, but what we're gonna focus on mainly is how to get those cards to jump out of the deck and for you to catch them in midair which is not only a magical uh, feat but a feat of incredible skill as the cards are whirling in the air where they can see it's this amazing aerial moment and you catch them as one and then three cards or four or five or whatever you like so without further ado let's get into the uh, tutorial all right so let's get started before we begin i am using the monarchs the blue monarchs by theory 11 love these cards link below if you like them and i'm using rubber bands by joe rinfleisch joe rinfleisch has the best rubber bands in the business whether you're doing rubber band magic or like we're doing here incorporating them with cards or rings or whatever these i highly suggest to get i'll leave the link below all the top professional magicians use Joe Rinfleisch's rubber bands. Check these out. And if you're interested, something I'm starting right now is the secret link. I have a secret link. The link is below. I'm not gonna tell you what it is because it's secret link. Check it out. First of all, what you're going to need to uh, do is, is a four card or three card or single card control to the bottom. Now you can use whatever control you want. I like using the uh, middle card control by Ken Krenzel, which I mentioned. And uh, this normally would look like this. So if you have a selection, the 10 of clubs goes into the middle um, and it's already on the bottom just like that. So it happens fairly quickly, no noise if you do it correctly, and minimal hand movement. There's a little bit of hand movement, but not much. Um, so the mechanics of that I'll briefly overlook, but do check out those references that I talked about in the intro if you want to learn more about them. So I use it for a multiple card selection. So we, here we have the King of Hearts, the Ace of Diamonds, and the Four of Spades all going into individual spots within the deck. As I push them in here, this happens in four steps. One, two, three, four, <laughs> uh, and they're all on the bottom, right? So here's how this works. I'm gonna turn the camera around, or actually i turn myself around so you guys can see the exposed angle of this. So start off by doing it with one card. You're going to leave it into the middle of the deck, and you're going to use uh, your three fingers here to push them in. 
And what you're doing is kind of like uh, the DPS. You're you're actually letting it be out jogged uh, from the side of the deck like this. So you're you're gonna push it in diagonally, right, like this, so that it comes out here. Okay. So as you're here, looks like you're pushing it straight in, but you're actually leaving the corner here protrude so that your thumb can bring it down and out back here. Okay. From this angle, you won't see anything, right? But the card is actually here, almost ready to be uh, DPS'd, right? But we're not going to DPS it, we're going to straddle pass it. That's basically this move is a straddle pass. Once you leave it in the middle, we're, again, we're just gonna start with one card here. You're going to push it this way so that the card gets protruded here, right? I like to use my ring finger and help pop it out. So the other side of the card is contacting my thumb. And with the help of the ring finger, you can sort of pop it out like that, right? So from the front, again, you're here. I use my thumb just a little bit to help push it down just so I can get it over uh, this part of the thumb here. This ring finger will help pop it out. As soon as it's popped out, my pinky goes underneath and my index goes over, to, over top. That's where you get the straddle, right? And then I, I go down with the pinky until I clear it and then I'm back up, okay? So from an exposed angle, this is what it's gonna look like. Here, here, use the this, use the ring finger. Um, pinky down here, index up here, pull it out and bring it to the bottom. So from the top, you should have very little movement and uh, shouldn't make too much noise as you're here, just like that. So when it happens quickly, you have the card here and we're ready to go with the card on the bottom again. Okay, so all you have to do now, and again, if you want more work on this, check out those references. I'm, I'm briefly going over this, but it's gonna take a lot of practice. If you're familiar with the DPS, the diagonal palm shift, uh, you should be already familiar with this. And you know, it uses some finger muscles here between the pinky and index because of the straddle. So here again, boom, straddling, right? My pinky's gonna come this way. So it clears the card, and as soon as it clears, it comes right back. So the same thing happens with multiple selections. I like to do this, by the way. So once I have all three selections, you fan them out this way, not this way, this way, because as you riffle down the side of the deck, you can leave them there at individual spots, which is kind of fancy. So you go one, two, three, and now all three are in the center of the deck. You can display that, you can show that to them. Close it up. Now you're gonna do the same exact move, except this time you're gonna do it with three cards. So again, boom, and now I keep a break. So I'm keeping a big gaping break with my pinky right here, okay? One more time, we've got three selections here. Remember your selections. One, two, three, I'm gonna show them to you. And now I'm gonna square it up, and as I do, boom, ring finger here is so the cards are contacting my thumb and the ring finger allows me to pull them out a little bit, just enough for my index to get over there and my pinky. I'm going to basically apply pressure to allow those cards to bend basically uh, because the bending of the cards is gonna, is gonna allow them to clear this deck. Because if you didn't bend them, you know, if you don't bend the cards, you're gonna, you're gonna flash more. So by bending, you're, you're sort of constricting that flash window. All right, so one, two, three, you're here. As they go in, boom, contact, bend until they get out and just clear and then you square everything up. So in real time, all three cards go in, you're here and now we're controlled to the bottom and you wanna keep your break. Now, once you have that break, you wanna start with the rubber band on your dealer's side or you can hand it out for inspection because the one thing you do not wanna do in this trick, once you've controlled these three cards, the one thing you do not want to do is flash this card, right? Because that's going to be their selection. So your hand always has to be tilted down with your break over these three cards. So they think the cards are lost somewhere in the deck. They are not. They're right here. You're going to take this rubber band, keeping your hand, you know, tilted towards them, not tilted up, tilted here. With the rubber band, 
you're going to place it within that break. Okay, so right in that break where those three cards are, but from the back, it looks like I'm just placing it around the deck. Okay. You're going to twist the rubber band. So now you've got one turn on it. Um, at this point, you don't need to hold the break anymore because your rubber band is creating that break for you. So you can completely let go and hold the deck. You're going to use your thumb and you're gonna riffle down the side and they can say stop wherever they want. It really doesn't matter. So stop, you're gonna insert this loop into there, give it a little bit of a snap and now you can let everything go, okay? So at this point, they've selected a place within the middle of the deck. Now with this hand, again, don't flash this, with this hand, you're going to pick everything up and you're going to do basically a swing cut, right? So you're gonna pick up with your index exactly where they stopped you without flashing again. So they stopped you here, you said, okay, we're gonna take exactly where you stopped. You're gonna take the top pack and you're gonna extend it onto the bottom. Now, you need to keep the pressure here with your right hand, because if you don't, those cards will start shooting out prematurely like this and that's no good, okay? So you're here. You want to pick up at that break. You want to grab that whole packet, bring it to the bottom and hold tightly, okay? Now that you're in this position, turn the cards like this and readjust your grip like this because the cards are going to want to, you guessed it, shoot out of here. If I let go pressure, they're just gonna shoot right out. So what you wanna do is just let go of your thumb and these fingers here and the cards will jump out. Now normally they'll jump out they won't jump out separately, they'll jump out the same, but because I released them before, that's what happened. So let's go over that one more time. We have the rubber band placed on my left hand. We're gonna put three selections into the middle. One, two, and three. We can show the spectator those three selections. I'm going to bring them to the bottom, keep my break, use this rubber band, place it behind, twist it, run my finger down. They say stop, place that in there. I'm done, grab at that break, holding everything here. These are your three selections freely on the bottom. Holding everything, going around. Now, the elastic's here, the rubber band's here, so they're gonna shoot up this way. So I want to turn it here so that when I let go, I get all three selections and I can catch them there. Now, catching them is just, uh, you'll see, it's pretty easy. The cards stick together and now you're left with a rubber band around this deck, uh, half the cards are face up and face down, so all you need to do is simply uh, fix that and you're good to go and you're gonna continue performing. All right, we're gonna run through that one last time and then we're gonna call it a day. So one, two, three selections get lost somewhere in the middle. Uh, you push them in, you control them to the bottom, keep your break. This rubber band goes around back, twist it, don't flash, run your finger down somewhere there, grab that break transfer it around the deck so it's face up, face down, turn the deck around, and one, two, three. That's the trick. Thanks so much for checking this out. I'm glad you guys watched it uh, through to the end or else you wouldn't be here with me right now. This is a fun move. I love performing this. I think it's really cool. Anytime you can incorporate aerial moves into card magic, I think lay people and spectators really enjoy that because it becomes this this really skillful trick, which not solely relies on a gimmick or a sleight of hand. It becomes this amazing sort of bigger playing effect. So for parlor or even for like street or friends or whatever, it's fun to see the cards jump around in the air, you catching them as one and have them being multiple cards. That's a really cool thing. Uh, people don't know, even I don't know the physics behind that. I don't know how it works, why multiple cards stick together as they're spinning like crazy in the air, uh, but it does. And it's a really cool thing. So you can do it with like four aces, four kings, four of a kind, or like I like to present it as a multiple selection routine, uh, finding their card. So it's a great way to end off a nice little routine or just to do a one-time performance for multiple people. Whatever, thanks for watching guys. Remember to subscribe if you haven't already because I need your subscriptions to fulfill the void within me. And don't forget to like this video if you did like it. We'll see you on the next one guys. Have a good day. Peace, rock.